Hey there, it's Sky White Thai. I'm here filming right now uh, using my camera. So right now, as all of you know, the virus, you know, we're in quarantine, at least here in California, we're here in quarantine. You know, we have orders to, you know, stay at home because, you know, now that, you know, I actually have time to work on the channel, um, I just realized that I have nothing to upload right now for you guys. And I'm not even know what I'm gonna stream because streaming, I'm still trying to figure out the whole thing with Discord and streaming and stuff like that. So just don't worry about that. I just needed to film something and well, this morning I woke up and it's around 8.50ish, it's almost nine o'clock and figured that I would make a, you know, make a vlog. But you know, I didn't know what to make my vlog about. So I'm gonna be cooking some breakfast <laughs> today. Um, it's a very simple breakfast. It's something that anybody can do. It's really easy. I'm gonna be making crepes today. Now, I know crepes sound really scary, but this recipe is really simple and you should most likely have every single ingredient in your house at all times. This is my tutorial on how to make crepes. Um, I'm using a recipe off of YouTube from an older uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I will uh, link the recipe or the video it came from down below. I'm gonna take that recipe. I made a few modifications, um, but I'll explain all that in just a moment. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so for this recipe, um, we're gonna be mixing everything in a large bowl. Uh, there are no specific instructions for how to mix wet and dry greeting separately. It's just, it goes all in one bowl. So you're gonna need one large bowl. The next thing you're gonna need is a spatula, which if I could, here, this is okay. So you're gonna need a spatula next, obviously, because you have to mix all the ingredients. So we'll move on to the other utensils or the other tools you'll be using in the in this tutorial. I'm just gonna start with all the ingredients. So um, in no particular order, here are the ingredients that you'll need. You'll need some milk, which I'll be using um, an organic, oh, non-dairy um, milk beverage, it's not technically milk. Eggs. Going to need some sugar. Uh, I have some regular cane sugar as well as some brown sugar um, that I'll be using because, you know, I don't have as much uh, cane sugar and I need to save some of it, so I'll substitute some of the sugar with some brown sugar, uh, which it shouldn't be a problem. The next ingredient you're gonna need is some salt. No, we're not gonna be using a lot of salt, it's just like a couple pinches of salt, or not even a couple, like a pinch of salt, so it's not a lot. Now, the original recipe doesn't call for cinnamon, but I'm gonna be adding it in there because I think cinnamon goes a long way. And of course, finally, you're going to need flour. So you're gonna need uh, you're gonna need a good amount of flour. And the last thing you need is some butter. I recommend that you melt the butter first before starting the actual process. And then once it's melted, I recommend that you also put it in the in the fridge for like 10, 15 minutes. Like I said, I will be linking the original video down below in these in the description, and I will be linking the recipe or the quantity recipe that I am using in the link down below as well if you guys wanna try this out. Um, because I am multiplying the original recipe by 1.5 since I have more than two people in the house. I will be speaking out the quantities of the ingredients out loud. You can listen in, but I again, I will just link it down below just to make it easier. All right, let's begin. Okay, so the first ingredient that we're gonna start with are the eggs. When cracking eggs, I recommend that you have a paper towel and a little plastic bag, um, like a plastic disposable bag, so you can crack the egg, open the, open the egg, and then dispose of the shell inside the bag. So I'll just crack the eggs really quickly. And it doesn't matter if the yolks break because you're gonna be mixing the batter anyway. Once finished cracking the eggs, I recommend that you wash your hands so that way you don't contaminate everything and you can throw away the paper towel now. Okay, so now that we've cracked the eggs, we're just gonna go ahead and whisk until the eggs and the yolk um, and the egg whites are completely mixed. Okay, now that the eggs are mixed, we're gonna move on to the milk. So, in this recipe, the recipe calls for half a liter of milk, um, but I will be using three-fourths of a liter in this recipe. Okay, and once you have the milk poured into your measuring cup, just go ahead and pour the milk into the eggs and whisk slowly. Okay. 
Okay, moving on to the sugar. Um, for sugar, we'll be adding the sugar per tablespoon. So I'm just gonna start with my white sugar. I think I'm gonna do three tablespoons of white sugar, possibly two. And you wanna make sure that the sugar, ooh, whoa, okay. <laughs> That's one and a half. You wanna make sure that you pour the sugar over the batter so that any sugar that falls out gets added to the batter because a little extra sugar doesn't hurt anybody. Okay, so I added three plus tablespoons of my white sugar, and now I'm going to do a little bit of brown sugar, which hopefully, I've never tried this with brown sugar before, so bear with me. So brown sugar is usually a little bit thicker, so I think I'll just add two tablespoons of it. Two heaping tablespoons, that is. Okay. And it looks like all the sugar has settled at the bottom, so uh, I think that it's time to mix this. And just make sure you keep looking at the bottom to, you know, make sure that the you can tell, see if the sugar is dissolved enough. Okay, moving on to cinnamon and salt. Now, cinnamon and salt, like I said, um, you don't have to add a ton of these. So for the salt, uh, just put a little bit in your just put a little bit in your hand and um, see like even this is way more than enough or uh, this is around the amount of salt that you should be putting in with this recipe uh, for the original recipe it is a little bit smaller now for cinnamon I don't usually measure the cinnamon I usually just put in how many pats of cinnamon so um, just mix it so one pat two pat three pat. So three pats for this recipe, uh, two for the original. And just go ahead and give that a quick mix. Alrighty, so moving on to the butter, which has been sitting in the fridge for at least 15 minutes now. And now you're going to add the butter slowly and just mix. So the original recipe calls for 50 grams of butter. Um, and I use 75 grams of butter for this recipe. Just give it a quick whisk and make sure to make sure that the butter is in the batter. And the butter, it's not going to mix completely with the batter. Um, it's just to help give it a little bit more flavor and to make sure uh, it cooks better on the pan. And uh, the butter is going to be settling on the top a little, so don't worry. Um, it will eventually go down uh, when you keep mixing the batter. So we're going to be moving on to the final ingredient, which is flour, the most important ingredient. The original recipe that I'm using calls for 250 grams, which converted, uh, I don't have a weight for grams, so I converted the grams to ounces, which 250 grams of flour is equivalent to about 9 ounces altogether. Uh, for this recipe, I'm using around 375 grams, uh, which is converted into about 13.23 um, ounce. So the flour can be poured into the mixing cup directly. However, um, a lot of people like to use like a cup or like a or a measuring cup to you know take it out and then put it in so that way it doesn't get as messy. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a two thirds a cup. I'm gonna keep adding to my bigger measuring cup until it hits 13 ounces. Okay, make sure you level it out so that way you don't over add flour because if you over add flour to crepes, it'll give it a more battery taste and uh, that's not what we want out of crepes. That's more pancakes than crepes. Okay, so we have the flour. Uh, this is 13 ounces right here. I measured it to the line and now we're going to be mixing the flour into the batter and for this you're going to be wanting to add the flour um, in increments at a time. Um, and mixing. Um, if flour gets stuck to the size, I just use the whisk a little to get them off and mix it up more. So you're probably starting to notice that the flour is starting to conglomerate a little bit and that's completely normal. Okay, now that the batter is completely mixed, uh, you're going to let your batter sit for 10 minutes uh, so that way it has a little bit of time to, you know, kind of just thicken a little bit more. Now that the colander's out and we're waiting for this, we're gonna go ahead and start preheating our pan. Okay, so to preheat our pan, we're not gonna need a big pan. We're just gonna need like, you know, like a, a smaller skillet, one that you might cook eggs on. You're gonna need a spatula as well to flip 
the crepes over on the other side so that they cook on both sides. And the bigger the spatula, the better it is to work with this um, because crepes are thin and can break very easily. So for the preheating, I'm just going to um, preheat to a low medium heat. If you have the heat too low, then it'll just take too long. Uh, I'm also, I'm using canola oil, by the way, for this. And so now we're just gonna put the crepe into the pan. And there you go. And for the crepe, you should just put in enough batter just to cover the bottom of the crepe. There you go. So that should be enough batter. And just move it around slightly. And there you go. Okay, looks like the batter is starting to stick on the top. So I'm just going to move it around a little bit more. It looks like the batter on the top is completely stuck. So if you can try and get the crepe to move a little bit um, from its position, if you need to, you can just, you know, take the sides, move it a little. And now that the crepe is moving, we can try and flip it. So one, two, three. And if the crepe flips on one side, uh, you can just use the spatula to kind of move it over. Uh, it should flatten out. So not the prettiest crepe, but um, it has that circle. And it kind of has that yellow color that I was talking about earlier. Okay, so it only should cook on the other side for like 15, 20 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it onto this plate now. And that's what the crepe should kind of look like. I'm gonna make some more crepes and I'm just gonna speed through this process. So there it is guys, uh, that's the end of the vlog. In the recipe that I used, I got about 18 crepes, counting the ones that kind of failed. In the original recipe, I usually got about 12, 13 crepes. This made about six more. They're not the prettiest, and I know I'm not the best cook, but hopefully I was thorough enough. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know down below. Anyways, that's the end of the vlog. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, I'm always right around the corner. Bye.